This is fan mail from Argentina. How fucking cool is that? Which, by the way, unbelievable sports fans and unbelievable, like when ACDC and all those guys, all the bands I like, when they go down to South America, it always makes me feel embarrassed at my behavior at a concert. Like, I thought I was fucking into band. Like, the whole place is just going crazy. Incredible. Incredible fans. All right. I remember seeing, like, whatever that ACDC one uh, concert film is when they're down in South America and they're panning through the crowd of people standing outside waiting to get in and there's, like, women in tears. Like, they're going to go see a boy band and they're like, this band changed my life. I'm like, these people fucking rule. So listen to this nickname here. Oh, hola, Bill. El Paladito Rojito. El Paladito Rojito. Bill the Red Baldy. I mean, tell, tell me that's not my name coming out of the bullpen. Tell me I'm also not giving up six runs and getting shit thrown at me as I walk to the dugout making no eye contact with the home crowd. <laughs> there was El Duque, and now you got, you know, it was El Guapo. And now you got El Paladito Rojito. I like that, man. I don't give a fuck if it's insulting. I know what I look like. I'll take it. Anyway, I'm a 24-year-old man from Argentina, uh, Latino America. That's everything south from Mexico. Um, Don't worry. I'm bad at geography, too. Uh, That's T-O-O, not T-O. Anytime it's also is T-O-O. Wish my voice text would understand that. Uh, Just checking in on you. To tell you thanks for doing what you do, I love to hear your podcast while I work out at home. I'm into calisthenics since almost two years, like you used to be. Uh, I know. I like it. Fat shamey. I enjoy this. Um, You started to be someone important to me after hearing about the changes you went through in your way to becoming a father. My father was an angry person that fixed everything with screams and slaps. (laughs) Yeah, that's the way it was done back then. Men men didn't know any better. He goes, and he left when I was 14. Or 14, as the guy from U2 would say. Uh, My mother wasn't any better since she never did anything to defend me and my mother and just jumped the wagon into another relationship a couple of months after my father left. She used to threaten me with, she used to threaten me, uh, kick me out of the house, Oh, threatened me with kicking me out of the house if I didn't accept it, her new boyfriend. So I escaped So I escaped to my grandmother's house, who has a few mental issues. Oh, Jesus, dude. All right, you got to break the, uh, you got to break, what do they call it? Break the fucking, uh, the curse or something. Uh, things are pretty grim for me, but I started investing the money that my father was obligated to send me after the divorce two years ago and started to learn programming a year ago. Best case scenario, I can get a job at the end of the year and get independent. That's fucking great. I'm at the four year of a five years of college studying psychology too. That's awesome, dude. Your revenge is, you don't even need revenge because that's, that's, a, that's a dark energy. Just let that shit go, move forward, and just be like, I am not doing that. I'm not doing that. And then talk to somebody about it and, you know, do whatever you need to do. Um, your journey from a red, angry, bald guy to a little less angry, <laughs> still red dad. This person's funny, man. In a second language, too. That is not easy. Uh, gave me the push that I needed to think that maybe I could be a good father in the future, too. Oh, look at dear Billy, the helpful boy over here. He writes, uh, I will look like to say a lot of th- more things to you, but this is getting long, and I know how you get with the long readings. So I'll make it in the form of a list. Sorry if my English is bad. It's my second language. You did great, man. Uh, Number two, I love your acting. It comes out really natural. That's because I'm full of shit. Uh, Number three, I think you are so powerful for surpassing all the challenges life throws at you. I don't know if I did that, but I appreciate it. You are inspiring. Bill, read it like a white woman that like to be offended on behalf of us. Okay, I think you are so powerful for surpassing all the challenges life throws at you. You are inspiring. Um, And lastly, go fuck yourself or, oh, here it is. This is how you say it in his country. Uh, I hope I do this right. Andate a la puta que te parió. Andate a la puta que te parió. Que te parió. You got to like, you know, you tell somebody to go fuck yourself. You can't be like, go 
fuck yourself. You got to get it out. And that day, a la puta que te pario, motherfucker. All right. Thank you for the email. I appreciate it. Um, you got a good sense of humor. I know you went through a lot of shit, but uh, you got a good outlook on life. And you seem like you're smart with money. You're funny. All right. So you're going to have a nice, beautiful wife. And then just treat her right. And, uh, you know, when you act like an asshole, just apologize. Uh, when they say what's going on with you, just say, I don't know. I need help. And then accept the help. And then hopefully you turn things around. You know, I don't know. That's all I've learned so far. 54 years. All right. Let's try to have something a little more sunshiny. You know, I, I try. I, I encourage women to write into my podcast. I've been begging you guys for the, like the last six months to a year at so I can balance this out because I don't want to keep trash women. It's just so fucking easy. So here we go. I got this woman wrote in. Thank God a woman wrote in. Please write in. Trash guys. I know we're morons. I need I need balance here. This is as balanced as MSNBC or Fox News. I want to smooth it out here. Here we go. All right. Some lady wrote in. All right. Toilet. Uh, Bill, I have a question about men and their bathroom habits. My husband and I have a great relationship. We just celebrated our fifth wedding anniversary and are very happy. Well, congratulations. Congratulations. You have something most people do not have. You have a happy marriage. Marriage. Sorry, I got the hiccups. Um, anyway, she said, the only things we ever seem to argue about are manners and housework. Uh, We come from different backgrounds and were raised differently regarding manners. He doesn't believe – he doesn't believe that manners are important (laughs) while I do. We both had to adjust to this and it has certainly been a a process. My standards for living have been lowered and his have been raised. We're somewhere in the middle at this point. Um, He has really made an effort over the years in terms of cleaning up after himself and not being gross – uh, but the one area that has always been a problem is the toilet. At first, he rarely put the seat down, and it drove me crazy. Um, he's wicked smart. He went to Harvard and always philosophizes his way out of arguments. His main argument for leaving the toilet seat up is that it isn't fair. Women and men are equals, blah, blah, blah. He also likes to use the argument that gay men probably leave the seat up all the time. Uh, I'm an interior designer and have several gay male friends and they all say they put it down because who wants to look at the inside of a toilet? Uh, the last thing I could say about it was please just do it as a favor to me. He said he would and I believed him. A few weeks ago I was taking a bath and I left the door ajar because he worries I'll drown or something if I lock the door. Well, look at that. He's a great guy. He's concerned about you. You know, there's a lot of people that that could give a shit. So anyways, she's in the bathtub with the door ajar a little bit. He says he suddenly came in and sat down on the toilet in front of me. And I was stunned and asked, are you pooping? And he said, no, he was just peeing. So now he's pee, now he pees sitting down and insists that this is normal for men. This is where we are right now in the toilet seat argument. He thinks he's being considerate, but really he's just super stubborn about the toilet seat. He also has no problem of going to the bathroom in front of me, and I wish there was more of a boundary when it comes to the bathroom in general. This idea has infected my brain so much, it just seems so unmasculine to me to see a man peeing sitting down that it's, it's now to the point that I think it's attractive when men pee standing up. So, Bill, what do you think? My husband loves your podcast and listens every morning. Yada, yada. What do I think? Uh, He's a great husband. He loves me, takes care of me, makes me laugh, and he's gorgeous. But the toilet issue weirds me out. All right. Where to start? First of all, this whole toilet issue, this whole tradition that has basically been started, I don't know where it began, but how if the man leaves the toilet seat up, he's the biggest fucking asshole on the face of the earth. I don't understand it. I don't understand why we are required to do it. I've never heard a woman give me a good argument as to why. They say dumb shit like so I don't fall in the toilet. And it's like that's my fault? You fell in the toilet? Who in their right mind drops their pants and sits on something without looking at what they're sitting on? Do you understand that? You're out of your mind. That's on you. 
Like, why does why the toilet have to be totally set up for you, but I can go fuck myself? How come, how come when you're done with it, why can't you lift the seat up? If anything, it's, more, it's easier for you to put the seat down than for me to put it up. I'm working against gravity, you know? And it'd be one thing if you said, oh, here's one for you. If you want him to put the seat down, because this is what's really going on. You've nagged him enough. And it's annoying him that he has to put the fucking seat down. All right, so now what he's doing is what he's, he's actually, he's brilliant. He knows that peeing sitting down is weirding you out. Well, he's doing this passive aggressive shit where he's like, all right, you want the seat down? Fine. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start peeing sitting down like a woman and make it all fucking weird for you. And then I'm going to act like, no, no, this is more efficient. I like it. I'm enjoying this shit. He's He's playing the only card he has. I think it's fucking hilarious. Um, this is my advice to you. If you want him to go back to peeing, standing up, and putting the seat down, basically your dream bathroom situation, why don't you give up something? Why don't you say, okay, if you do that for me, I will do this. You know? Why don't you say, like, look, if you go a month straight, uh, you know, and and always put the seat down. Uh, after 30 days, I will give you the most insane blowjob you've ever had in your life. Okay, why don't you do something? Okay, instead of acting like you're 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 fucking some sort of royalty, and that everything should just be set up for you. All right, I agree with you. That's fucking weird. It's weird for me to picture him sitting down, but I think he's doing it in this passive aggressive way, which is fucking hilarious to me. All right, there you go. That's what I would say. Blow him once a month as long as he keeps the seat down. That's my solution. All right, and God bless you, and congratulations on your good relationship. All right. All right. Can we find it? There we go. All right, this one's titled, Oh, Jesus. Um, I am a 23-year-old man from Paducah, Kentucky. Now, why would you tell me that? I didn't want to read that. There's probably 18 people in your your town, right? Needless to say, there isn't much to do. About five months ago, I met a girl who was two years younger than me and moved into town from East Kangamunga. Uh, we hit it off almost instantly. It was great. You know what? I'm going to have somebody bleep out this city. All right? I got to have them bleep out the city and the state. He goes, we headed off almost instantly. It was great. She is beautiful, educated, and has a great ass. Sorry, a little Al Pacino for you. Uh, we took things slow, and I found that to be something unique in today's time. Most girls give it up within a day or two, but she wanted to take things slow, and I appreciated that. I found myself falling head over heels for this girl. I hadn't been with anyone in over two years, and I felt that it, if she was... And I felt as if she was a sign that maybe there was a bit of hope in this world to be happy. And she communicated with me that she felt the same way. Okay, so about two weeks ago, we went out to a bar and we had some drinks, played some pool and had a great time and ended up getting a little frisky with each other. I drove her home totally expecting that tonight would be the night I was going to bang this beautiful woman. When we reached her driveway, we started making out in the car. And... Asked if she wanted to come in. She got real quiet and said under her breath, yes, but. And of course, I said, but what? And that's when she told me she is a transsexual. I literally yelled. I was so shocked by what I heard. I could hardly keep myself together. And I told her, him, whatever, that I wasn't going to go upstairs with her. And I would call her tomorrow. And she got out of the car crying and said, I was born this way like some Lady Gaga shit. Wait a minute, trans, what is, what is, what is transsexual? Like a hermaphrodite? Wait a second. Ah, oh, Jesus, Bill, you're, t- you're too fucking dumb. Why do you guys, why do you guys write me? Is this, is this the fun, is this the fun part of it? Just finding out how fucking dumb I am? Transsexual. This is hilarious. Now I have this on my search en- engine. Transsexual. 
and Neil will use my computer and look up like transcontinental and transsexual is going to come up. Bill, is there something we need to talk about? Um, transsexual, here we go. A person who's undergone a sex change operation. A person whose sexual identification is entirely with the opposite sex. All right, well, that just made me even more confused. So if you had an operation, how were you born this way? Or she's, or the person saying, I just identified with being a female. Oh, I see. Okay, so they had a set. So the dude had a sex change operation. Okay. He goes, I haven't spoke to her s since. It's S-I-N-C-E, not S-E-N-C-S-E. -S -S -E. um, that night, besides a few text messages. She's going on about how much she loves me and she is sorry she didn't tell me sooner. It's even gone as far as me having to turn off my phone because she won't stop calling. I've never been pursued like this before. What do I do? Part of me actually feels bad, but I can't see myself banging an ass every night while my sweaty balls slap against her sweaty balls. Now, wait a minute. I thought the person had the operation. Don't they remove that? You know, I don't fucking know. Regardless of how gay this may sound, I still think she is incredibly hot. I knew it was too good to be true. Should I tell her that I'm just not interested anymore and completely cut her off, or should I be her friend? Or should I go bang her ass? It's weird. The thought of banging her ass excites me, but the thought of her junk swinging around makes me want to throw up just thinking about it. Thanks, Bill, and come do a show in such and such state sometime, you fuck. Um, what should you do? Um, I don't know. I honestly don't know. What's funny is you're literally just like you're mentally where she is sexually. You know? I don't know. It, like, you got it. You got a. You, it's like you're standing on the state line and you got a foot in either state, just like her. You know. So, I think your your emotions are normal. And I hate when fucking people get offended by this shit, and they go, "That that fucking you." You know, they get all offended like that dude is now a woman. It's like, no, that is a dude. That fucking uh, is a different kind of dude now. <laughs> you know, it's that's not a woman. It's still a dude. It's just a different kind of dude. You know what it's like? You ever see when somebody does uh, buys an old car and they take all the chrome off it? They want that nice clean look. Yeah, that's what they do to their 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 crotch. You know, that's a dude that took the chrome off. You know? <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Other than, uh, I, I don't, I don't know. Do, do, do like, that, that fucking, it's, I, I don't know, dude. Do, do whatever the fuck you want to do. Is what I, I would say. Let me go back and read what you said. Should I tell him I'm not interested anymore? Please cut her off. All right, part of me actually feels bad because I can see myself, because I can't see myself banging an ass every night while my sweaty balls slap against her sweaty balls. Well, if it makes you feel better, I don't think the balls are there anymore. Although, they might have kept them like a hood ornament. I have no idea. Oh, Jesus. I really am a moron. Uh, regardless of how gay this may sound, I still think she's incredibly hot. You know, why don't you just split the difference and get a blowjob? I, I don't know what to tell you. That's so funny. I knew it was too good to be true, this poor bastard. Um, I, I, I would say this. I'd say you'd want to sit on that decision. Don't be like the Baltimore Colts in the 1983 draft. Did you guys just watch that 30 for 30 where they immediately walked up two seconds in and they selected John Elway? 
you know, rather than fucking waiting the full two minutes or whatever to see if anybody gave him an offer. And then they ended up with nothing. I, I, I would I'd sit on this one for a minute. Um, and I think that this person's actually pursuing you the way that they are because they're in a desperate situation, which is uh, the whole thing is in reality, the whole thing is unfortunate. You know, people should be able to be who they are. You should be able to like who you like. And that person should be able to, from day one, say that they're transsexual without getting judged. The reason why they didn't say it was because they were worried about this fucking moment here, which once again is another sad, depressing thing about humanity. Um, I would say follow your heart, sir. You know? And not your balls. If you really want to find love. There you go. Balls in your court. No pun intended. All in. Dear Billy Brain Fart. Back in December 2012, I was enlisted in the United States Air Force. Off we go into the wild blue yonder, flying high into the sky, Yeah, we dive. That's all I know, because that's all they play in the movies, right? That's just the credits. Nothing can stop the U.S. Air Force. How about a stronger Air Force? I'll tell you right now, they won the championship, they feel like they're unstoppable, and that's the kind of thing that ends up getting you shot down out of the sky. You have to feel the weak side pressure of the third world countries. I mean, planes are disappearing. Who's to say that these people don't have these things? All right. Um, despite being engaged... Oh, wait a second. I got engaged... Oh, yeah, the guy joins the fucking Air Force, all right? He enlisted. I got engaged to what I thought was the lady of my dreams. Life was good. Unfortunately, I got stationed out of state and had to move. Despite being engaged, she opted to stay behind in what was supposed to be temporary. We managed to keep the spark alive for some time until she lost the engagement ring in April 2013. All right, let's stop right there. Guys are morons, and a man can lose a fucking ring. All right. The only way a woman can lose a ring is if she's cleaning it near a sink. OK. And she doesn't understand plumbing and then later turns on the water and sends it through the J trap. All right. He's going to feel the weak side pressure on the J trap on fourth down situations. Um, when a woman loses a ring. <laughs> You got to understand, like, this, that's so many of them. That's the thing. The ring. They get to fucking stick it under their fucking girlfriend's noses. Yeah, bitch. Yeah. Right? They live for that. It's like you getting a game-worn jersey. All right. So she lost the fucking engagement ring. Wow. Eventually, things spiraled out of control, and she left me in June of 2013 saying I deserved better. All right, well, that means either she doesn't love herself and, uh, like, when I, saying that you deserve better, what I would immediately think is that she, if a woman ever said that to me, that's like, all right, you fucked around on me and how many times? Uh, anyways, this put me in a huge state of depression to which I credit your podcast for helping me out. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, come to find out she banged, oh, she banged four different guys from June to August. There you go. And those are just the ones she admitted to, okay? That's like when you come home buzzed or drunk in high school and your parents go, how many beers have you had? How many, what do you say? Two. If you're really shit-faced, you'll say four. And she said four. So what does that mean? She had a 12-pack of dick. All right, in August, she came back into my life after she said she went, she too went through a depression. She was living even further away now but still wanted to try and make things work some type of way. Finally, February of this year, I got the chance we were waiting on. I went house hunting. Ooh, Jesus, dude, what are you doing? Where she lived in an attempt to make things right. Come to find out she had been banging a married guy with kids and also talking to someone else, telling me 
Wait, and also talking to someone else while telling me she wanted me. I confronted her and she basically said all I'll ever be to her is a fucking FaceTime friend. What? You confronted her and she said all and she said all I'll ever be to her is a fucking FaceTime friend. A week ago she called me and now she wants to be friends again. I love this girl. That is your problem, sir. That is the only reason why you're writing me, because everything you're saying, this is a joke, your decision. He goes, I love this girl very much despite what she's done to me, kind of like eating sugar. It's good, but it fucks you in the long run. My question to you is, do I throw all my chips in this time or do I fold? And yes, I'm probably an idiot. Either way, thanks for the laughs and go fuck yourself. P.S. Do a show in Mississippi already. Jesus Christ, Bill. That's on my bucket list. I'm going to do one down there. Um, All right. Here's the deal, dude. This is the deal. Your heart is clouding your brain right now. All right? And uh, here's a great expression that somebody said that their therapist told them one time. They said, I don't let chaos live in my life. All right? This is the deal, okay? Um, She has come from some sort of unhealthy fucking background where... She feels that, yeah, she's got some sort of low self-esteem thing, I'm guessing. She just thinks that she's a piece of shit and probably doesn't deserve a great guy like you. So she deliberately went out and sabotaged it, probably because she's used to being around a bunch of dysfunctional fucking people. So when she actually found somebody outside of her wheelhouse, she ran back to the the comfort of that dysfunctional horse shit. All right? That is not your fucking problem. Okay? When you're trying to find the person that you're supposed to fucking be with, You have to find somebody that is as right as rain, all right? That's why you ask the questions. Are your parents still together? Uh, What are your relationships? Like all the red flags, both for men and women, listen to this thing, okay? If they have issues with their fucking parents and they don't fucking speak to them and they have a lot of anger issues towards their family, fucking walk. Walk. All right? If you're young, you're drafting in the first round, okay? Okay? Okay, that's the Des Bryant pick, like fucking Bill Belichick. He passed on that one. And everyone's like, dude, what are you talking about? That's a fucking 10. And look at him. Not saying the dude isn't a 10. Not saying he's not a world-class fucking athlete. But all the the baggage that comes with that horseshit. You got to look at it like that. So what you need to do is, you know, all right, you want to compare it to sugar? You want to get over your sugar addiction? Just go cold turkey. All right, six days fucking in. Okay, you're going to start to turn and you're going to be looking at candy and cake and pies going, why the fuck would I ever eat that? Because it's out of your system. And that's how you're going to look at her. Why the fuck (laughs) would I ever eat that? Yeah. Dude, that's not the mother of your kids, man. You know, that right there is a Hank Williams song waiting to be written if you marry her and you have kids with her. All right. I mean, dude, that, that, that's the kind of woman that could turn you into a fucking alcoholic. Uh, you need to walk away. All right? And you know what? You live in Mississippi, so you understood that fucking Hank Williams reference. All right? Walk away and, uh, and stay single for a while until you get that craving out of you. Because it's not fair for you to get into another relationship with that shit there. And you probably wonder, Bill, how do you know all this shit? Because I'm a fucking piece of shit. And I've done it. I've been like... All of these all of these questions, I've been both people. I've been the person that fucked around. I've been the person that got fucked around on. I've made horrible fucking decisions and all of that shit. It, was, it wasn't until I finally fucking decided to, uh, you know, stop surrounding myself with fucking people that reminded me of people that I grew up with and actually tried to create a winning culture in the locker room. Um, so that's what you need to do. You need to uh, you need to draft character first. All right. There's plenty of beautiful women that came from wonderful families, and those though that, oh, that's the one that's the keeper. All right. I know what the sh- okay. A woman like this is fucking your brains out. I know she is okay, and that's the sugar right there. Okay, so you got to let that go. All right. Here's the deal. Next time you're thinking about calling her, rub one out. I'm dead serious. Fucking rub one out. 
And the second you're done, I bet as you're orgasm, you're gonna this you're gonna be like, oh, thank God I didn't call her. That's what's gonna happen. All right, and remember that thought. Um. All right, girlfriend is too religious. Hey, Billy Redskin Nutbag. Uh, my name is Carl. I'm a 27-year-old guy who is starting to become annoyed at my girlfriend's religious behaviors. Um, it doesn't bother me so much that she is Christian, for I also believe in God, prayer, and keeping true to a solid traditional set of moral values. It's just that her life seems to revolve around Christianity and her church. Her entire family is extremely Christian, and all her friends are from the church. Well, Jesus Christ, you didn't notice this from the beginning? Was she acting like she wasn't religious? Um, I mean, the last time she invited me to hang out with them was to a bonfire at the church where we were drinking apple juice and listening to Justin Bieber. Oh, boy. Well, Justin, I don't know. Well, doesn't Justin Bieber, I always get him confused. Justin Timberlake was the first one. Justin Bieber. Well, doesn't he sing about banging chicks? <laughs> That's kind of weird, isn't it? I thought he did. At least when he was younger. Not that he's old now, but now he's, you know, he, he's wise beyond his years considering he made it when he was like 14. So you age in dog years as a fucking celebrity, I would think. Um, anyway, he goes, don't get me wrong. I didn't want to date a crazy, a crazy party crazy party going wench i did want to date a nice morally responsible girl who is fun to be with just not with these powerful christian undertones she even invited me to go to the bar with her friends the thursday before easter all right she said she told me they were going to honor the last supper by eating some food and by drinking cocktails i looked at her and i was just thinking are you fucking serious i know she has her belief but is there a good way of telling her to lighten up at the very least not to call me out on little stuff like using the Lord's name in vain? That actually pisses me off, especially when she does it around others or give me these long disappointed looks when my sense of humor runs over the topic of Christianity. Uh, well, okay, I'm going to read the rest of this and then I'll give you my opinion here. I like her a lot. I'm just not sure if I can handle that amount of religious energy for the rest of my life, much less have her turn my kids into nutless Christian geeks who go to youth groups every other night. Oh, and how do I convince her that she is an adult? She drives home at 12 at night because she feels that sleeping over might be disrespectful to her parents and unchristian like, even though she will let me plow her 20 minutes before mass. No joke. Uh, oh, Jesus. I've, well, so she's not all bad. Uh, I, I told her that it is a two-way street that you should respect her parents' options, but they should also respect her ability to make her own decisions. You know why they should? Because she is almost fucking 30. Oh. Please give you, me your opinion on the situation. Love you and good luck making another child. That is if Nia is willing to ever couple with you again. <laughs> Um, look, she needs to be dating one of those people that goes to the bonfire and is excited to be there. All right. Um, I don't think it doesn't sound like, I don't know how she started doing the Christian thing, but you said you, you, you know, you like her a lot. Do you love her? Do you love her? You just have to decide like, like you don't have to have any of this conversation with this woman unless you plan on marrying her. Um, and if you plan on marrying and then you got to sit down and just say, listen, if, you know, I stub my toe, I'm going to say, God damn it. Or Jesus Christ, I am. And I don't need a fucking lecture from you. All right. You can stop short of saying, I don't think Jesus is coming back. You can stop short of that. You don't need to be a jerk. You, you know, but like, yeah, she's going to want her kids to be super fucking religious like her. I would think. So I would I would figure that out. But um I I don't I don't think it's a bad thing that somebody's that fucking religious anymore. I just don't. If it works for them and they're not hurting other people, you know, 
if you know, I don't know, if I was a better person, I would actually go to a church every week just for the reminder to not be a complete piece of shit. I do like that aspect of it. I don't like the intolerance of it. The same way I'm liberal, but I can't listen to these extreme liberal people who cancel people for 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 having a a, a fucking just a thought that was different than theirs. So it's it's like most things, you know. It's a group trying to do this for a good reason, and then it eventually spins out of control. All right, you're 27 years old, you know. Maybe you just want maybe you just get out of this thing, okay? You don't seem. I gotta be honest with you. I don't think you love this person. I think you've hung around with them long enough that you have feelings for them, but I don't think you love them. At no point did you even say that you like this per- love this person. You just said you like her a lot. Um, but I really think that, you know, look, look, she's three years old and then you, she's, you know, she's an animal in the rack. She's banging you and all this type of shit, right? And you're having a good, you're having a good fucking time. And now you're like, okay, what am I going to do here? And she's like fucking the 700 club and, you know, that's not where you're at. So I, I, I think I would get out of this if I was, um, if I just, you know, and take this all with a grain of salt because I don't know you or what's going on. But just the way that was written, I just think, you know, you're having a good time. You guys are banging and whatever. But uh, now when you actually think about taking the next step and getting a little more serious with her, you're like, Jesus Christ, my kids are going to be like fucking reenacting the Last Supper and shit instead of listening to ACDC. That's not what the fuck I'm looking for. You know, if, I, if I'm reading this wrong and you actually really care about this person, you want to marry him, then you need to sit down and talk to him and just say, listen, and you just got to lay it out there and just say, listen, I'm going to say whatever I want. I'm going to make jokes about whatever I want. And sometimes I'm going to make fun of uh, Christianity and I'm not going to raise my kids uh, to be a bunch of church going sissies. All right. You're not turning them into like they're not, you know. If my kid stubs his toe and goes, oh, what the fuck, Jesus Christ, you know. I, I understand, watch the language, but not, you know, that's out of respect for us. It's not, a, not out, of, out of respect for this guy who said he was coming back and he never did, okay? So at this point, he's kind of like the absentee father for everybody, isn't he? Am I crazy? You don't have to go that far. You know what I mean. Um, yeah, I would just say, I would say that. And it'll make the breakup a lot easier if, if you just... If you just tell her, like, yeah, listen, I'm, I'm going to have kids, you know, but they're not doing this Jesus shit. So you can fucking forget that. You can forget that all fucking day long. Why can't I plug this fucking thing in? What the fuck am I doing wrong? Sorry. As always, I don't have any fucking time I'm trying to do 50 things at once. That's what I would do. All right, you're 27 years old, man. You know? Go on, get a 25-year-old who never goes to church. And have a good time, baby. Do whatever the fuck you want, you know, or stick with this one. But you got to tell her what's up if you're going to stick with her. That's it. All right. Because you know what? She's doing that for you. She's letting you know what's up. Marry me. Have some Christian kids and stand around a bonfire. I seen fire and I seen rain. I seen sunny days that I thought would never end. But I always thought that I'd see Jesus once again. You know, they're switching up the lyrics. No. I don't know what they do. I've never been to some shit like that, but I can tell you right now, I would be like, uh, are they going to sacrifice a virgin? Like, what the fuck is going on here? I need to get out of here. You know? I don't know, but I'm also an asshole. All right, that's it. I'm calling it right now. The Baylor Bears are going to beat Gonzaga. They're going to beat them. I think UCLA showed people how to beat them. Right? In the first half, not in the second half. I'd say in the first half. I didn't even watch the second half. In the first half, you just fucking slow it down. They, they can't, they're, the, they're the Kansas City Chiefs. Everybody's getting lulled into their game. Stop getting lulled into their game. Uh, I don't know shit. All right, that's it. Go fuck yourselves. I'll check in on you on Thursday. I have a huge guest, a huge drummer guest on Thursday. I'm teasing it, all right, who has a brand new book out that is so fucking educational and amazing. I'm actually applying these study practices of it to trying to get my instrument rating on my pilot license because it's all the same shit. All right. It, no, not all the same shit. It's just so genius the way he wrote it. All right. That's it. I'll see you guys on Thursday. Girlfriend thinks I'm gay. Dear old Billy bonkers. I have a situation that is kind of hilarious and kind of fucked up. So I thought this might be the perfect place for a little advice. 
Insert 30 seconds of silence while you fumble to get your theme song. Oh, you're right. Let me see here. Is this it right here? It's time for advice. Hey! Your host, Billy Burr. That's me! And I'm ripping off this melody from somebody else. Okay, here we go. Um, let's see here. Oh, wait. Now, does it go into the next fucking thing here? No, it doesn't. All right, cool. All right. Um, my girlfriend and I, my girlfriend and I have been together for about three and a half years, and I truly am in love with this girl. She checks all of the boxes and then some, and then some super smart, beautiful, funny, amazing family. And she loves me. I absolutely see a future with this girl. I'm 25. She's 23. So I know we're, so I know we're young, but I've been told I'm very mature for my age and she's getting there. Um, no, it's nothing wrong with getting married that young. Then you can have kids when you're young and fucking see most of their lives before you kick it. Um, Unlike me, the fucking super old dad here. Now, for some context, before I jump into the situation, in middle school and high school, I had been bullied by some kids saying I was gay. I've always taken pride in how I dress, how I look, my hair, and I would definitely describe myself as metrosexual. I was also very tall and skinny growing up, and I had poor posture. Oh, that's it right there, dude. Tall, skinny, poor posture? Yeah, you're going to get fucked with... It's the fucking laws of the jungle, unfortunately. Anyway, so the little fucks had a lot of ammunition, and I honestly don't blame them for it, but I'm not gay. Uh, as you can imagine, it fucked with me and killed my confidence. Yeah, dude, you're talking about someone who grew up with orange hair. <laughs> so, yeah, I know what it's like to have a target on your back. Um, in college, I decided I was going to put on some muscle. Really difficult. I have the metabolism of a hummingbird. Well, you got a great sense of humor, though. So that, that makes up for a lot of it. And do something about one part of me that I have always been self-conscious about. I gained 20 pounds and am now proudly 6'2", 170 pounds. I do well with the ladies. And I've had a few girlfriends over the years, uh, none as long as this one. I have no resentment for being bullied when I was younger. In fact, it served its purpose as motivation for me to, better, to be a better version of myself. Um... I think about bullying all the time. I think, wish I could go back and, and, and stop a lot of it that I saw. Um, I was that weird. I was like a, a, in the middle of the pack. I got bullied. I bullied people. You know, get it off of me and put it onto somebody else. I really wish I had, mat- you know, you wish you had the maturity now of back then. Cause some of the stuff I think about, I still think about some of the shit that I saw some kids go through. It's just like, fuck. Brutal. Um, in the first year of dating my girlfriend, I opened up to her about getting bullied, and she told, and told her that's why the gym became so important to me. She was supportive and felt bad that I went through that when I was young, but she also wanted me to confirm with her that I wasn't gay. Her asking me frustrated me. Yeah, that's fucking weird. But it was easy, and I chalked it up to her not knowing me well enough yet. I was pretty adamant about my answer and thought she got the point. In our second year of dating, she somehow brings it up again and says, are you sure you aren't gay? Like you aren't going to marry me, have a family, and then come out, right? Whoa. And this time around, the question pissed me off. We had this conversation early. I've been with you for two years. We fuck weekly, and it's great. I'm also getting insulted. No offense at all towards gay people, but my girlfriend is asking these questions based on certain stereotypes, and I don't think there are enough evidence air quote, evidence for her to be suspicious. I probably overreacted a bit. No, you didn't. But it hit a nerve that my own girlfriend is bringing up feelings I had when I was bullied in middle school. Uh, Got to be the end of it, right? Well, we're three and a half years in, and tonight she pops the question yet again. Dude, break up with this chick. She words it similarly to how she worded it the second time, and I got pretty heated. I basically said, We've had this conversation now three times. I've told you each time that I'm not gay, nor have I ever questioned it. It pisses me off that after th- more than three years, you're still asking me this question. This is not normal. I don't think most women in relationship ask their men yearly if they're secretly gay and going to leave them, so I'm insulted. She, of course, then becomes the victim because I didn't react how she wanted me to. I said, I'm sorry, but this is not okay. The next time you ask me that question, I, I better have a dick in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong here? No, not at all. 
Is dressing well, being neat, and keeping myself well-groomed really that much of a red flag that my girlfriend should be questioning my sexuality? I don't even talk like the stereotypical gay dude. Um, Any suggestions for how I can get her to believe slash not ask me the question anymore? Can't wait to hear whatever you say. Go fuck yourself. Um, Yeah, I would break up with this chick. Or I know this is what I would find out what the fucking be like. Okay, did your dad marry your mom and then after you were born come out and say he was gay? Like, what is this fear or what the fuck is it that I'm doing that makes you keep asking me this question? Um, That's what I would ask her. And if you don't like the answer, I would fucking hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more. Because that's really fucked up. Now, granted, I haven't heard her fucking version of shit. Um, <laughs> it's funny if she fucking wrote in. Um, yeah, I'd have to hear what her concerns are to ha- have any fucking idea. But if you're telling me the truth, which how the hell do I know? But if you're telling me the fucking truth, you're not gay and you just dress well and fucking whatever. And she's just asking you that. I mean, you might be. Are you an effeminate straight guy? Because they have those too. You you know. I don't fucking know. I don't know. I have no fucking idea. So I do think that it is fucked up that you have expressed. I'll tell you, you know what else I think is fucked up? That you've stayed with this person. You're saying she's checked off all the boxes. I Like how many boxes is she checking off that once a year she can ask you legitimately if you're gay or not and you still want to be with her? There's a lot of questions I have here because I I think, I mean, if, I mean, I I would just one time, maybe I think you can ask somebody that once and then a year later they do it again. It's like, all right, I'm leaving you before I get like a fucking complex here. Like, Jesus Christ, I'm fucking, you got me sitting here watching John Wayne movies now, trying to fucking be extra manly here. So you stop asking me that fucking question. I don't know. I have no idea, but um, I don't think she's convinced. And you're three and a half years in, you're 25, you got your whole life ahead of you. Um, I don't know this person, but I can tell you this, reading your email and just hearing your side of it, This woman is not checking off a lot of boxes for me, personally. Um, So, I don't know. Is it like her fucking weird way of trying... She doesn't want to break up with you, so she just keeps doing this thing that annoys you? I don't know. I I don't... This is That's a weird one. Some fucking heavy emails this fucking week. Jesus Christ. (coughs) I never kill myself, but I'm fucking welcoming death, whatever the hell that was, and then this shit, and fucking... Some fucking little Stalin chick running an HOA. Jesus Christ. When when the fuck did this podcast become so, so, so deep, man? Um, All right. That is the podcast, everybody. Um, So I'll I'll leave you with this. Because what that that, that guy was talking about, the guy eating too much, you know, um, that really bothered me. I I, I hate people being, as much as a douche as I am, I don't like people being in pain. You know what I mean? And uh, someone who's been in a lot of pain for a lot of his life and now figuring out that, you know, you know, your natural reaction is to fucking go away from pain, distract yourself from pain, bury your pain and all that. And it's just it just it's still going to be there, which is why the next night you're still going to want to drink just as much, if not more, or eat just as much, not as more. Uh, go fuck somebody you shouldn't fuck, whatever your fucking addiction is. Um, but it's kind of amazing when you stop just for a couple of months and really try to work on whatever that fucking thing is that's bothering you, how much progress you can make um, quickly, especially if you're talking to somebody that understands what you're going through. So I wish that for all of you, because if you don't, Deal with that pain. Not only are you going to hurt yourself, you're going to hurt the people around you that you love. All right? 
And that's the only public service announcement I've ever made in this podcast. So with that, go fuck yourselves, and I'll check in on you on Thursday. All right, girlfriend wants me to move out. Dear Billy Longnuts. <laughs> Is that an age joke? If that's an age joke, that's fucking hilarious. Uh, I'm a 21-year-old college student. Um, that Billy Longnuts is fucking. If that's because you, you're old and your balls are hanging down low, that is fucking hilarious. Um, is that my Native American name? Him, him, Billy no- Longnuts. Um, all right. I'm a 21 year old college student, and my girlfriend and I have been arguing a lot because she wants me to move out of my parents' house into a house share so that we can be closer. Wait, 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 wait. I'm a 21-year-old college student. My girlfriend and I have been arguing a lot because she wants me to move out of my parents' house. Oh, I thought she meant she wanted you her to move out. You guys were living together and she wanted you to move out. I was like, all right, you're 21. That's some of the great, greatest news you could ever get. All right, she wants me to move out of my parents' house into a house share so that we can be closer. We currently live 40 minutes from each other. She makes ominous statements about the practical practicality of our relationship. And if I don't move and catch and, and catches an attitude because of it, every time we meet up or talk on the phone, it's getting exhausting. And I feel a lot of pressure from her constantly bringing it up. All right. And how does that make you feel? Do you like feeling pressured? Do you like somebody giving you an attitude because you're doing what it is that you want to do rather than what she wants you to do? Buddy, this is the tip of the iceberg. And and this is this thing that manipulative people do is she's going to make it seem like that when you move in with her, that this pressure and all of this shit is going to end and you're going to be happy. You'll be happy for week 10 days and then she's going to start with this shit again. You are laying the groundwork for this relationship where she's going to get to use her emotions as, as like this, this, this manipulative tool to get you to fucking sit up, beg, go for a walk, take out the trash and do all of this shit. I can tell you right now, dude, do not, I don't even need to read the rest of it. Don't even fucking move. Anyway, she's moving out of home, uh, to live in her grand. Dude, did you voice text this? I'm going to write, I'm going to read just how you wrote it. She is moving out of her home to live in her grandmother who passed away's house in the city. So she won't be paying rent. Okay. So her grandmother died and she wants you to move in there because it's her family home. She doesn't want me to stay over or for us to have sex there. Sir, did you really need, you really need my advice here? I respect this boundary. This, however, sucks as it means that the decision for us to have a sex life and private time together rests in my hands. Yeah, dude, she's 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 fucking she's boxing you in. I really want to move out, but it would cost me about six hundred dollars a month plus bills and food. And I'm not sure I can afford it. I have explained this to her, but she says that her paying bills in her grandmother's house makes us even. I'll be honest with you. I fucking hate this chick. (laughs) I'm just being honest. I also have an unplayed work placement abroad next year, which I need to save for that will cost me three to four thousand dollars. There you go, buddy. That's the carrot on the stick you need to be 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 chasing. My parents do not and will not financially support me. I really love this girl, and despite the obstacles of not having privacy and the distance between us, our relationship has been great up until this point. I'm starting to wonder if it'll work out. What do you think I should do? Um, I think you should stay at home. And save up that three to four grand and she should understand that. I think you should tell her how her pressuring you makes you feel. And if she doesn't acknowledge this and doesn't care about your feelings and it's all about her, it's the tip of the fucking iceberg. And consider yourself lucky that you're not living with her when you break up with her. That's it. Um, If I learned anything in the last few months of therapy, it's just like, you know, I have not acknowledged my feelings and my feelings were not acknowledged my entire time growing up which is why I'm an angry person. Because when I start to feel feelings that I don't like in my head, I just have to go to anger because I never thought I could just be like, hey man, I really don't like that. Because I grew up in the sit down and shut the fuck up generation. So none of this makes you feel good. So you need to tell that to her. And there's no fucking way you move in with this chick ever. 
under these circumstances where she is basically fucking uh, 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 using her emotions to get you to do what she wants to do and then having a fucking attitude. I mean, do you realize, like, seriously, if I can just take a second here, like that childish behavior that so many women get away with with the guys in their relationship that you basically have to dance to their fucking tune or they won't be happy because then what ends up happening is your happiness has to exist within the circle of their happiness. And at that point, you're no longer an individual. You've lost yourself in the relationship. You've become like, like this emotional fucking hostage and it's fucking bullshit. It's fucking bullshit. All right. So sorry. I'm fucking Got gas here. I don't know. I think I wolfed down this fucking piece of toast before this. I apologize. Um, Belching up a storm here. Uh, Yeah. So fuck that. And any person, male or female, listening to this, don't ever move in with somebody if, if that is the way it's going down. Don't ever get involved in a business or a personal intimate relationship where the other person is using their fucking moods as a way to get you to do something that you do not want to do, but they wear you out because you just want to see them happy. Hey, fuck their happiness. Their happiness is not your responsibility. Your happiness is your responsibility. And you don't fucking move in with somebody until their happiness and your happiness intersect. That's it. Go fuck yourselves. I'll talk to you on Thursday. All right, girlfriend wants to bang my brother. Ah, oh, I teased this earlier in the podcast. Girlfriend wants to bang my brother. Jesus Christ. I would love to hear Joel Olstein read this. I mean, Jesus wants your girlfriend to bang your brother. Uh, hey, Bill, I'm sure this happens. This has happened to you before. <laughs> Is that a long a roundabout way of saying that I'm not a good looking guy? Uh, but how should I handle my girlfriend wanting to bang my brother more than me? Thoughts? She said it three times in one night. What? Why are you still in this relationship? Would you still be in the relationship if you said that about our sister? Hey, listen, sweetheart. Not to say you don't have a nice rack, but like, I mean, you, you got to agree with me. I mean, your, your sister's tits are, are ridiculous. What? What? What's the matter? You told me to be honest with you. Um, um, anyway, she said it in one night, three times in one night, and that he is better looking, etc. So she's either going to fuck him or she's just trying to get under my skin. I told her after the third time to go fuck him then. And she tried to act like I was an asshole. Yes, of course. Of course she did. I feel like this crossed the line and it's all I can think about. Oh, dude, I got to tell you something right now. Not only do you say that, you fucking dump her. Dude, for her to fucking say that to you is so out of line. And that is just the tip of the fucking iceberg of the mind games. A a fucking asshole like this is going to play with somebody. All right? Dump this person. This is the thing. She's going to actually fucking respect you. Because she obviously doesn't respect you enough that she's saying that shit to you. So if you fucking dump her... You know, what's going to actually make her want to do is fuck you more. And this is what you do. This is the Jedi level. You know what? When she wants to fuck you more after that, you know what you do? You don't fuck her. Done. Done. It's over. That's one of those things like, I don't know what kind of a fucking jerk off you think I am. Like that, that's basically what she's saying to you there. She thinks you're a fucking jerk off. And you have to show her that you're not. I would dump her. And then that is fucking it. That is fucking it. And when she fucking um, does all of those women manipulating things and fucking turns on the sex vibe and all that, dude, you fucking, you, you like, a, you, nothing. You give her nothing. That's it. I don't need to read the rest of this. I will, though. Um, if it was a friend of mine she thought was more attractive. I wouldn't care. You should care. She shouldn't be saying that, dude. This is, this is why you don't fucking say that. Let me ask you this. Could you do any of this to her? Could you say that one of her, her girlfriends is more attractive than her three times in one night? Anyways, he said, but I hate the fact it's my bald headed fuck of a brother. What should I do? Anything 
I think about, I get more angry. Uh, thanks and wear a hat next time. <laughs> I like how you're taking your anger out on me. Um, yeah, dude, you're dating somebody that has crossed the line that you're not going to be able to get past. Okay, past. Sorry, <clears throat> I really got to save my voice, dude. I've been screaming and yelling every weekend doing my act and been watching the Red Sox through the playoffs. So I apologize for my, I think I'm going through puberty here. Um, yeah, dude, that is a no fucking brainer. You know, uh, just dump her. And here's another thing. Don't tell your older brother or your younger brother, whoever your brother is. Don't, don't tell your brother why you dumped her. Because one day he's going to get drunk and he's going to bring it up and then, you know, like an asshole. And then you guys are going to get into a fight. Okay. And it's all because of this, this who is trying, is driving a wedge into your family. This is, this is the kind of person you're going to bring this person into your family tree. Huh? You're going to dump your fucking seed into that. I don't think you are. Walk away, walk away. And you know what, dude, you got off fucking easy. If you dump this woman right now, you, you got off fucking easy. Jesus Christ, God bless the poor fucking bastard that she's going to fucking marry. Right there. All right, here we go. Next one. Hey, Bill, uh, I asked for advice a couple months ago about a friend of mine. This one's another brutal one. About a friend of mine whose girlfriend was having a kid, and I was suspicious about whether or not um, it was his because he had gone and gotten checked twice to see if he could have kids, and the doctor said no. Oh, I remember this guy. Remember that one? The doctor said this guy he got checked twice. They said he couldn't have kids. And then all of a sudden his girl was pregnant. And there was questions about her being faithful. I remember this. I remember this. Well, this is the update of this. He said, well, about five months into the pregnancy, she miscarried. So the problem kind of solved itself, but it was a terrible thing to happen. Now they are living together and I'm still pretty positive she was cheating on him. And he's hanging on to the relationship now through some sort of guilt because of the lost child. It just feels like my friend got one pulled over on him. And I really want to talk to him about it, but I can't find a good way to do it. Uh, your podcast rules, and I hope you come to Edmonton sometime. A comic strip, right? The comic strip in Edmonton. I'll make my way up there at some point. Um, dude, that is a brutal, 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 brutal situation. And... Uh, it all depends on how you feel. Are you going to be able to live with yourself if you just say, listen, this kid is just a moron. He's my friend, but he's a fucking moron. Because that is an option. You know, the good fellas moment. You know, when he, he uh, they tell that joke in Italian and De Niro says, what does it mean? And, and Pesci goes, it means he's, he's content to be a jerk. You know, what am I going to say? My wife two times me? That joke. Basically about a guy who knows his wife's fucking around on him and he just doesn't, he just looks the other way. He's content to be a jerk. So that's what your friend is right now. I know there's emotions involved, so there's, there is hope for him. But, you know, he's, he's fucking himself over. So this is the deal. If you can live with yourself and just say, this guy's content to be a jerk, I'm not going to get in the fucking middle of this because there's so many obvious red flags here and this kid is just choosing to think, ignore them. Um, you could just say, fuck it. He's content to be a fucking idiot. But if you're not going to be able to live with yourself, then I would just sit down and talk to him. All right. And, um, hopefully he listens to you. And if not, and he stops being your friend, um, there's nothing you can fucking do about that. And I got a feeling Probably seven or eight years from now, you might get a phone call of him saying, you know what, you were right. But th those are impossible situations. Jesus Christ. How the fuck would I handle that? I would, uh, I would say something. You know what, I would. I would definitely say something. But uh, I don't know how to do that, to be honest with you. How the fuck would I say? I would say, listen, you know, I'm friends with you. We've been friends a long time. That's when, that's when your buddy knows something fucked up's coming. <laughs> listen, we've been friends a long time, right? We've had a lot of good times, right? You know? you know, you know that I've always been there for you and I never try to steer you wrong, right? Like, I think your girlfriend is a two-time in 
Yeah, how do you say that? I would just rip the Band-Aid off. Just say, listen, there's something I have to talk to you about. We're friends. And as a friend, all right, I can't stop thinking about this. And it would kill me to not bring this up to you. I have to do this. I'm not trying to be malicious. I'm doing this because you're my friend. And then I would just say, look. Ah, uh, Jesus, I just had it and I already forgot how fucking difficult this is. I would just be, <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. Look, you told me you couldn't have kids. You went to the doctor twice. You, you got tested. They said you couldn't have kids. Yet this girl somehow got fucking pregnant. Don't say fuck there. Yet your, your, your girl somehow got pregnant. Okay. Then you just sort of stare at him. <laughs> I, I don't know where to go from there. All right? My gut's telling me that that wasn't your fucking kid. See, that's a hard one, too. That one, that, that kid you just fucking cried over that didn't get born, I don't think it was yours anyways. Ah, oh, Jesus, dude. This is fucking brutal. Brutal. Um, I would do, this is what I would do. I would do what I'm doing right now. Into a mirror and just keep correcting it as you go. The same way I said, okay, don't say fuck there. And then you back it up again. I don't think that she's being, I don't think you're, I don't think the woman that you're with has been a 100% honest with you. And I don't think that she has been a 100% faithful. And my gut was, is telling me that that wasn't your kid. See, that's brutal. Taking it to there. All right. I think you need to get out of this relationship. I mean, I don't, dude, I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to fuck it. Yeah, you stumped me. You stumped the schwami. I, you know, not like I know everything, obviously, but uh, I usually can come up with some sort of angle. I don't know what the fuck to tell you. Um, but for whatever you do, don't write it down. Don't put it in a letter. Because he'll probably show it to her, and then then, uh, then it'll just be brutal. The fuck that. Don't, don't do that. Just, uh, yeesh. That's a, uh, yeah, I don't know what to tell you, dude. That's a fucking brutal one. Jesus, does it work to just say it? Listen, man, you're best. we're best friends, right? We can say anything to each other? Yeah, I think your girlfriend uh, fucked somebody else without a condom and got pregnant that she was about ready to let you take on the responsibility and invest that sort of time, your life. She was content to throw away your fucking life. Do you understand me? All right? You went to two fucking doctors and they said you can't get pregnant, dude. How dumb are you? Get your fucking head out of her fucking vagina and wake up. It's not your kid. All right? That was God. God gave you a fucking mulligan. He gave you a pass. All right? There you go. You want to get old? Jesus. You want to get fucking religious about it? Get out of the goddamn relationship. Stop being such a fucking pussy. Leave her. Cry about it for fucking six weeks. Whatever you got to do. Go join a fucking gym and get on with your fucking life and start wearing a condom. All right? Now, I know that team that we saw in the first half is not the fucking team that I know. And we got another 30 minutes of fucking football, and I want you to get out there and prove to me that you can play like the way I know you can play. That's what you do. You go, there we go. Took me a minute to work it out. You go fucking Vince Lombardi. Grab, grab, grab. Nobody tackling. You got to go like that. You got to build up. You got to start slow. You got to start slow. In all my years of looking at relationships, I don't think I have ever in my life seen a woman so pull the fucking wool of pubes over somebody's fucking eyes like I did in that first half. You know what I saw out there? I saw bullshit. Just some. I don't know. Dude, I'm out. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. Tell that fucking kid he needs to make some halftime adjustments. All right? Pull the ripcord. Get the fuck out of there. Gee, I, ugh. See, these, these, these are the things. They, they, don't, they, don't, they don't talk about these kinds of, of, of women on, on those, right? They're horrible fucking people, and they should talk about them. They always got a goddamn excuse, you know? Maybe they're just whores. You ever think of that? Is there any women out there? Is a woman out there? I want to I know this. Okay, this is totally anonymous, and I'm not judging you because I'm a male whore myself, all right? I want to know this. Do, have, 
Is there a woman out there who had dad stuck around? You had a great family? You weren't touched in any funny way? You went to school? You know, you were a Girl Scout. You did all the right things. But you just love dick. And not only do you love dick, you love a bunch of different dicks. And you are in a relationship, but every once in a while, you just got to go out and go bang somebody else because you're fucking bored. Basically, are you wired like a man? That's what I want to know. Okay? And you can be totally honest. Let's examine, let's examine that because I don't even think it's fair to just brand them all whores. I don't. I think some of them are uh, actually really intelligent and they've actually sat and contemplated it, you know, or, you know, done what I've done is justify their piece of shit moves. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know something? This is the time when I really should just have a guest. I, I don't have a guest. I got to have more guests on this fucking podcast. What do you, what, 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 what do you, what, what do you want from me? All right. You guys want some YouTube videos for this week? Huh? Have you slumped over in your cubicles left yet? Have you done that hmm? with five minutes left in your fucking day? Ghosting a chick mid date. Oh, I've done that a couple of times. Not proud of it. Not proud of it, but I did it. And I did it not because I was being mean. I did it because I didn't know how to get the fuck out of there. And that was the easiest way. I'm sure some women have done it. I feel bad that I did it. And I'm sure I paid for it in a karmic way. All right. Dear Billy Schmeg Schmegma Lips. I don't even want to look to see what that means. I know that's brutally ins I already feel bad enough about most of my body. I don't need to hear that. Okay. I hope you can weigh in on a little story that just happened to me. I matched with this woman on Tinder and things were going all right. I threw a few jokes and she replied with tomorrow is my birthday and I alluded to wanting to hang out. I thought, why not? Oh, you fucking ghosted her on her birthday? Oof. Well, look up in the sky before you walk out the door tomorrow, dude. There might be a piano coming down on you. Um, anyways, uh, she said, tomorrow's my birthday. And I alluded to wanting to hang out. I thought, why not? I don't have anything going on. She was going to celebrate with her family on Friday. They wanted to meet up for a beer on Saturday. Okay, at least it's not her birthday. Fast forward to say she, pat she messages me the location of the bar and wants me to come because she's lonely on her birthday. Oh, is this her birthday? She went, oh, this is her birthday weekend. You're saying it's her birthday. All right, it's her birthday. We're back on her birthday. Well, as soon as I show up, I buy a beer and she wants to leave. I should have seen this as a red flag already because I didn't even really get to know her through one beer. As soon as we get into my car, she tells me that we can't go to her place as her son is home with a date, and that would be weird. It sounds also... Like there's some sort of time issue here. Like there's another guy. That's what I would think. Like why? I don't even get to finish my drink. You're like, come on, come on. Give me the dick. She's got to get back to her other life. This is fucking weird. Get out. Get out. Get out of there. It's like your fucking earpiece came out of your ear and I'm in the van. What's he doing? Get him out of there. Uh, she wants me to pay for a hotel, not even knowing anything but her name. And that she has a grown son. Yes, I know she was older, but she had the whole MILF thing going on. Uh, well, it could be that. Older women know what the fuck they want. Um, I don't like this at all. At this point, I'm a little taken aback by the forwardness, as you should be, and having to suddenly foot the bill for a hotel room that I don't want to pay for. She won't even split it, you know? She's that fucking hungry for the D, as the kids say on Instagram, uh, the gram. She changes her mind shortly after I tell her I don't even know her yet and wants to drive 30 minutes away to a bar in a more happening part of town. Now she doesn't. She wants to get away from the guy that's not banging her anymore, but she hasn't broken up with yet. I'm a little irritated at this point, and she starts to say, it's my birthday. And we're driving. As we're driving, she starts to tell me how she wants more kids and criticizing me for not having any. First of all, how the fuck did she end up in your car? Now all that's running through my head, now all that's running through my head is to get her out of my car as fast as I can. Exactly. So I pull up to a gas station and give her 20 bucks and say I need a six-pack 
for later in the night. And I'm going to pump some gas. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. With a trip back <laughs> to the bar, to the bar and back. I watch her go in and don't even swipe my card and pretend to start pumping gas. As soon as the coast was clear, I put the pump back, got in my car and drove away and unmatched her on Tinder so she couldn't contact me. So am I an asshole here? Dude, no, that's fucking hilarious. And you gave her cab fare home. Okay. You gave, and she's in a safe place. She's at a fucking gas station. It's a public fucking place. Oh my God, that's hilarious. The gas station I left her at was only a few blocks from the bar where we left, and there are plenty of ride shares in the area as well. It's also worth noting I legitimately felt like she would be the type of person to start hitting me if I rejected her while driving. Thanks and have a magical day. Casper. <laughs> Oh my God, that's hilarious, dude! I got I gotta tell you something. Not only was that was that not bad, you handled that perfectly. This 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 had so many fucking red flags, and you don't know what's gonna happen. You don't know what she's gonna do, and God knows, you know, believe women, whatever the fuck she says. And there's something about her, I like, you know, you got to be. Let's get the fuck out of here. Let's go to a motel. Uh, she wanted to get it done, and then if you wanted to get to know her, fine, I'll get to know you. Why couldn't you stay in that bar? She's got to go 30 minutes away. This just reeked of another guy driving around trying to find her. Where the fuck is she? Why isn't she fucking her man on her birthday? Like that guy isn't out there looking for her? The fuck out of here. And she seems like she had a kid real young. I don't know. I think you, I think you did. I think you, you did good. You did good, son. You did real good. And a gentleman, too. You could have said, I want a candy bar and give her a couple of bucks. Um, although she is going to walk out with the booze. But you paid for it. Ah, fuck her. Good for you. God bless you, sir. God bless you. It's the kind of leadership America needs right now. Um, anyways, uh, dear hillbilly bucktooth, uh, I'm in a bit of a pickle. I'm 23. A lot of, lot of, lot of emails from 23-year-olds this week. Evidently, uh, 23-year-olds are having a uh, little difficult fucking time here. Um, dear Hillbilly Bucktooth, uh, I'm, a bit of a, I'm in a bit of a pickle. I'm 23 and want to break up with my girlfriend of two years. We're long distance. I'm a Kiwi. She's a Yank. Uh, what's a Kiwi again? Is that fucking New Zealand? I can't, I can't even keep up. Um, anyways, uh, now I got to look it up. I don't want you guys to sound ignorant like me. Here we go. Kiwi people. Wikipedia, once again. Kiwi is a nickname used for interna internationally for people from New Zealand, as well as being relatively common self-reference. Unlike many demographic labor, its usage is not considered offensive. Rather, it's generally viewed as a symbol of pride and endearment from, for the people of New Zealand. The name derives from the Kiwi, a native flightless bird, which is a national symbol of New Zealand. It's a flightless bird, meaning you guys aren't leaving the island. Is that what it is? Until the First World War, the Kiwi represented the country and not the people. However, by 1917, New Zealanders were being called Kiwis, supplanting other nicknames. Well, that's cool. It's great that eventually it didn't become offensive. Usually after a while, it does. Are you saying that my dreams will never take flight? <laughs> um, anyways, uh, I'm a Kiwi and she's a Yank. Uh, sure, block her on Facebook. Okay, I'm 23 and want to break up with my girlfriend of two years. Okay, well, you just sit down. You just say, listen, we have to talk. All right, this is something no, I wish somebody just told me. This is what you say. You just sit down and say, honey, listen, we have to talk. Is something wrong? And then you just say yes. I'm just, I'm not happy. Okay. I don't think you're a bad person or anything, but I'm just, this just doesn't feel right. You know, it feels right in that I like you, but it doesn't feel like I like you to the point that I'm going to marry you. And then they just stop talking and that's it. And then she'll start fucking crying and blah, blah, blah. And she's crying because she's sad. And that is a normal emotion, and you have to be comfortable with that. And just you, you just said it. No, did you say it yet? No. And, and I, I, I think we need to uh, end this relationship. 
Not I think. And we need to end this relationship. That's it. You said it. I'm not happy. I'm not feeling like you're the person I'm going to marry. We need to end this relationship. Boom, boom, boom. We need to talk. I'm not happy. Yeah, you just fucking, that's it. And you just get it all out. And it's going to be another two fucking hours. But you don't waver. You don't go back. And then, then you're out. That's it. And then you don't go back. Anyways, he says, uh, sure, block her on block her on Facebook and other social medias we used to correspond. The problem is she has a lot of filthy nudes of mine I've sent her over the past few years. Needless to say, I have my fair share of hers. All right, well, that's a stalemate then. I'm worried she'll distribute them maliciously in revenge for breaking it off with her. She's that kind of spiteful. Trust me. Any advice other than hindsight, thanks and go fuck yourself. You're just going to have to man up and do it, dude. You know, and if the world's going to see a dick for a couple days, then so be it. That's it. That's it. All right. And um, I'm actually happy for you because who wants to be who would want to marry a spiteful person because she, she would have done that to you if you stayed with her in other areas. You're not happy. Get the fuck out of it. And then your hindsight, stop sending dick pics to people. You know, <laughs> I don't know. That's, that's how I would leave that. I mean, what are you fucking laying there like Burt Reynolds and playgirl? Except you weren't covering your junk. I don't understand. Like, I understand women because they're beautiful. I just don't understand. I don't understand. Understand guys doing that. Uh, you like these dick and balls, huh? Hanging off here. <laughs> um, a naked guy. It's like literally. It looks like it's like a design flaw. You know, women are all curvy and smooth and aerodynamic. You know, other to the point. Other women can look at other naked women and be like, "Oh my god, she's beautiful." You know what I mean? A naked guy. You're like, ah, Jesus Christ, you're fucking this shit hanging off. Cover it up. Um, dilemma. All right, Bill. Fathers. Here's another topic. Uh, what's with fathers having the this, this standard ringtones? Standard father's shoes and not giving a shit what they wear for a hat. Oh, I can answer that despite the fact that I'm not a father. I know what that is. It's what I've been fighting my entire adult life is having the woman in your life just wear you down. It's not even that. And then just the laws in society. It's What happens when you get married as a guy is the, uh, the pilot light goes out <laughs> for a lot of things. You just don't give a fuck anymore. You know, I know you have kids, so you put them first. And all of that type of shit. But there's, and as much as it's, as, from what I've heard, having a kid is the greatest fucking thing ever. And I'm not making fun of that. But there is a part of you that dies. You know? That howling at the moon. That fucking, you know, going out, just living. There's just something, there's a part of life that just dies and you just don't give a shit. You're a beaten man. All right? You gave in the love. You're married. There's no way out without just fucking having your wallet ripped out through your balls and then back into your chest cavity, through your heart, and through your spinal cord. You're fucked. You're looking at a beaten man. He doesn't give a fuck. All I need is the phone to make a noise, you know, and I can – I know it's ringing and I'll answer it. I just need these shoes to cover my feet so it doesn't hurt if I step on a nail and I don't get wet when it rains. And uh, I don't give a fuck. I just don't want to get a sunburn on top of my head. I'll fucking wear whatever hat you give me. I don't give a shit. You just, you just don't give a shit after a while. I think that's what it is. It's really sad, actually, when that part of you dies. You know what I mean? Like, I hate, hate all that, that midlife crisis shit that people talk about, that if you're in your, your midlife, you can't go out and have a good time. If you go out and get hammered, if you buy a cool car, you know, if you haven't played guitar forever and then you want to start playing guitar again, it's like, are you trying to recapture your youth? No, I'm trying to fucking live. I'm trying to, to have something that excites me. You can't be excited beyond a certain fucking age. When are you going to grow up? I think it's time to grow up. And if anybody says that, 
Even if it's a woman, you slap them right in the fucking face and say, how dare you? That's how you get away with it. Because the second the bouncer sees you slap a woman in the face, he's coming over there to choke you out. But if he hears the magic phrase, how dare you, he stops in his track because he immediately knows that the woman was completely out of line. That, that works. Try it out this weekend. Slap a woman in the face and, and then scream, how dare you? I guarantee you that the physical way that you're removed from that bar will be less than if you just hauled off and slapped a woman. If you just haul off and slap a woman, you're an animal. Okay? If you, if you say, how dare you, right afterwards, you're sort of the victim. <laughs> that theory has never been tested. Um, if you're a faithful listener, I'd like you to try it out. Not just randomly. You know, you got to find a woman that deserves it. In other words, stand in a bar for about eight minutes. <laughs> this is bad. Don't, don't do it. I do not condone uh, the slapping of women. That was actually to get me out of any legal trouble. And then I said it in a funny voice, so then I'll, I'll get in trouble. Well, weren't you mocking? Or wasn't, that, wasn't even the warning part of the comedy, Mr. Burr? Oh, go fuck yourself, counselor. Huh? I thought you were supposed to wear one of those Matlock suits. Um, all right. We're going around, uh, going around Europe here from Finland. Hi, uh, hello there, William F. Burr. I'm a 22-year-old guy from fin Finland, and I've waited a long time for you to do a show here. So I'm very excited to hear you're coming to Helsinki in December. Unfortunately, because of my studies, I'm doing a practical, tr I'm doing a practical training in Africa for three months, so I'm going to miss the show. I hope I will one day have the money to come see your show in the U.S., so I'm going to Ghana in a group of four students, and I'm the only guy in the group. I'll be in the same house and going to the same workplace with the, these three ladies for three months. We all know each other quite well, but I'm mostly used to hanging with guys. So if you could give me some advice or tips on how to mentally prepare for these three months, it would be greatly appreciated. Are there some topics or actions I should make Sure to avoid. P.S. Love the podcast uh, and all that other stuff. I hope to see you more on TV. Ah, oh, that's very nice of you. What a nice email. Um, are there some topics? Listen, dude. The amount of things I've fucked up with women. All I can tell you is what not to do. Um, all right. This is what I would do if I was you. The first thing you got to do is if you're a type A male on any level, you got to tone that shit down As, uh, if you're angry. All anger does is scare women, okay, or makes them not want to be around you, or it makes women who have daddy issues, a, 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 you know, it's like a moth to a fucking light, except the moth reaches in, grabs your heart, pulls it out of your chest, and throws it down the stairs. Um, if you're going to live with these three women, all right, this is what you could do. All right, are you trying to fuck these women or are you just trying to get along with them? All right, first things first, uh, make sure you're really neat. Granted, you know, women in the bathroom are some of the messiest fuckers on the planet, but uh, I would do that. I would come with slumber party energy and just fucking give into their fucking conversations. Okay, and that's right there is where you establish cred credibility. You're not angry. You keep your part of the bathroom clean, and you come with, oh, my God, you guys. You, you fucking give in to that fucking energy. Late at night when they want to snack and they're fucking jam jams, you join them. All right? And you never try to fuck any of them. Then what you do is you talk to them about how you're having problems meeting women in Ghana. And you need advice. And then they'll become a fucking wingman for you. And you'll be crushing fucking Ghananese fucking ass, whatever the hell you want to call it, right and left when you're out there. And they'll actually help you do it. That's, that's, that would be my game plan. But the last thing you should do is try to hook up with any one of them, unless it's the last weekend. And the last weekend comes around, all bets are off. You get in there and you fuck them all. <laughs> 
somewhere in there is probably some information that you could use. If anybody has any suggestions on what this guy should be doing, my my uh, my trip isn't until December. If anybody else has studied abroad with three broads and has better advice, um, for the love of God, let me know, and I'll pass it on to this this uh, this, uh, this 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 fine young gentleman. And at the end of the night, uh, everybody was laughing at my kids just running around their pajamas, chasing each other. And, uh, you know, I was really proud of my kids, man. They're just social. They're smiling. They're happy. They they know that they're loved. And, you know, I broke the curse, you know, (laughs) of, uh, you know, the shutdown emotion. That has trickled down through, uh, you know, through generations. Not even, I'm not shitting on my family tree. I'm just saying, you know, how I grew up versus how they're growing up. So it's good. And it made me feel good that I waited as long as I did to become a dad. So I worked out enough of my bullshit that um, seeing my kids running around being happy and not like all freaked out by comp- company and shit. My, my daughter was a little shy at first, but then she was, she was fine. I'll tell you what was cool. This week is um, I got my daughter out on the skateboard for the first time, had her all padded up and everything, and uh, and she just just fucking took right to it. She loved. It. She was a little nervous at first. I had to hold her hand and everything, and by the end, she'd get herself going, and then she would let go, and she would fucking crouch down a little bit, like she saw. She's been watching kids skateboard on uh on youtube and everything so she was crouching down doing the whole thing she had big ear to ear smile and um you know she was uh you know telling my wife to come out on the porch and watch her and my son was yelling down at her and stuff and everybody was clapping when she was skateboarding and stuff and we came up the driveway i said to her i was going you know i'm so proud of you doing great you know you did great and all that stuff right so I I said to uh, I said to her when she was being shy. Um, I said, you know, I showed everybody uh, your the skateboard because I had to take a video the first time she was going. Right, I was like, I showed everybody your video and how great you did. And she said, and she said to me, she goes, did they all watch it and were they proud of me? <laughs> she actually spoke about herself in the third person. It was hilarious. So. Um, Anyway, and I found out they got a bunch of skateboard parks out here, so that's what I'm going to be doing when I'm not working on this uh, this movie. All right, girlfriend has other boyfriend, according to her grandpa. By the way, what I just did there is a really important thing to do for quality of life. It's something that I just used to plow through and I would get sick all the fucking time. Um, all right, hey, old Billy Morrison. Uh, did you see Riders on the Storm in the Desert? I've been wanting to take shrooms for the longest, but I've been too much of a pussy every time I have the opportunity. Anyway, anyways, he says, I'm a 22-year-old college senior from Orange County. I've been doing what a guy should be doing in his college years as far as the ladies go, spotting red flags right away and getting out. That's good. Not getting too emotionally involved and having fun while also being upfront with these girls. That's the key. If you're just out there having fun, let them know. Because according to Sidney Lauper, girls just want to have fun. Like they, you know, they can be down for something like that too. But you just got to make sure there's, there's, there's big gaps of time between seeing them so nobody gets attached. And not trying to fuck them over. Good for you. I recently met a girl and we've been dating for seven months now. She's awesome and I've never connected with someone like I do with her. Well, that's right. That's good because you didn't get bogged down to a relationship. You waited till somebody special came along. That's what you should do. She's smart, funny, she's independent and makes money. And her relaxed vibe matches mine. It's been great. And I think I'm finally starting to grow up as I found someone I can see myself with for the long haul. That's great. She's a promo model. (laughs) And obviously gets a lot of attention. I thought you met this girl. She's a model. I can really see myself with her. That's good, dude. You got a hottie. Good for you. And obviously gets a lot of attention from guys. But I trust her. And it doesn't bug me. That's good. She has a guy best friend who used to to date one of her girlfriends. Kind of strange. Wait, she has a guy best friend who used to date one of her girlfriends. Kind of strange, but I didn't think much of it. They're really close and have been since high school. Oh, fuck. This is the guy she's going to marry, dude. 
I have a bad feeling. He's in the Marine Reserves and lives right by her. They've hung out once or twice while we've been dating, and she's always been up front about it, and nothing ever seems sketchy. However, I want to go meet her. Gra- I went to go meet her grandfather a couple weeks ago, masked up, obviously. And when she introduced me to him, he said, ah, so this is the Marine guy, right? She said, no, that's Aaron, my longtime friend. This is Zach, my boyfriend. He then laughed and said, damn me, huh? How many boyfriends do you have then? Right away, she laughed and told him her and that guy never dated like that. It's always just been friendly. Uh, when we left, I asked her what the fuck was up with that. She told me that her grandpa was in the Marines and he got excited when she told him that her friend was too. Apparently, they had never met before. Uh, The guy's over 90 years old, so obviously he's not all there, but he's definitely sharp for his age after talking to him. I tried to brush it off and give it time, but it's been two weeks now, and I got to be honest, that shit is still bugging me. Well, dude, I got to tell you something. If you were fucking cool with her being hot and guys looking at her and it didn't bug you, but this bugs you, this is legit. You got to listen to your gut here. Her dog just passed away, and I was with her all day and night when it happened. But as soon as I went back home, she said the guy was going to come over because he was close with the dog, too. Dude, get the fuck out of this relationship. Get out of this relationship. I don't know, man. I want to believe her because I've been cheated on before in high school, and this doesn't feel like she's trying to hide anything. But at the same time, that shit with the grandpa is tripping me out. What do you think, Bill? Am I being paranoid, or should I just brush it off? Brush off what happened as an old guy messing around. Or do you think this could be a red flag? It's, well, dude, if it feels like a red flag, I would address it. Thank you. And I got to say, your podcast kept, kept me from jumping out of my 12-story cubicle window when I had my shitty office job. LOL. Go fuck yourself. Um, yeah, dude. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't like the lay of the land there at all. I'll be honest with you. I don't like the lay of the land. And so I would just, uh, uh, you got to sit down and talk to her about it. Just say it bothers you. And well, what do you want me to do about it? It's just like, well, I mean, you know, I don't know. You've seen this guy all the fuck. I just, I don't know. I just think that's fucking weird. There's something fucking weird going on there. There's something re- that that whole fucking thing is really weird. She's the ex-boyfriend of one of her girlfriends. Now, what I don't understand is why didn't she just get with if she if he was single? Why the this is something on your side here? Why wouldn't she just get with the guy? I mean, is he in the Marines? Marines, or does he do that weekend shit? You know, like how if he's in the fucking Marines, why is he around? Wouldn't he be deployed somewhere? I don't like it. You know what? You know what? I'm going to fucking I'm going to phone a friend here. Any Marines out there? What is what is your gut telling you about this? They're all laughing right now in some fucking godforsaken place. They're listening. Get the fuck out. That's what you're saying, right? Over in Afghanistan, you listening? Right? I bet they're saying, get the fuck up. Dude, um, you need to address this. You definitely need to address this. Um, I don't like it. I'm not saying she's guilty, but there is definitely... Uh, if this was the cops, they would get a warrant at this point. There's enough here that <laughs> for a warrant. You might not find anything. The alibi might check out. But this is definitely, uh, this is something that, uh, perking the old ears up there. Um, all right, girlfriend flirting. Girlfriend flirting. Hello, Red Billy Boy. I have a question for the podcast. Um, I met a great girl six months ago. Six months ago. She's a real lady. And she prides herself on being honest and loyal. That's a red flag. Anybody who says, I pride myself on being honest and loyal, I just feel like they're already... It's like Roger Clemens when he used to always do the workout videos. 
you know, for the local TV. Look how hard he works out. And you find out he's, you know, doing roids. Here's another one I noticed. I watched a lot of reality TV with my wife, and she watches The Apprentice, Donald Trump. This is what I learned. Anybody who uses that expression, uh, lead follower, get out of the way, right? They're, they're always a moron. And they're always, it's, they're basically saying, like, fuck it, I want you to do everything my way. That's such a moron expression, lead, follow, or get out of the way. I don't know who came up with that, but it was instantly on T-shirts. And I never saw anybody remotely intelligent with the T-shirt that said lead, follow, or get out of the way. It's just that classic, like, I don't know. I know how to do shit. Lead, follow, get out of the way. Fucking Ian Zaring was saying that. This is how pathetic my life was. I was watching Ian Zaring on, uh, it was my dog, by the way. Ian Zaring on fucking The Apprentice. And he had to come, they, his team had to come up with a jingle for some sort of new fucking Budweiser that they wanted to promote uh, down in the Caribbean. So he decides he's going to come up with a jingle. It's between him and Johnny Damon. So you know the song's going to be good, right? And he comes up with like, uh, you know, drink fucking Budweiser, ba ba boo do da ba dee ba da ba do. He just, it's La Cucaracha. And they're looking at him. And he like, he's like, I got to get away from you guys because you're singing other stuff. I need to go over here and create. And he comes back with new lyrics for La Cucaracha, Right? He fucking, he, he, he fucking vanilla iced it. And then they're like, dude, that's La Cucaracha. We can't use that. And he got all fucking pissy. So we got to use something else or whatever. And he just kept saying, lead, follow, or get, a, or get out of the way. So the, 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 the project manager finally looks at him. She goes, I am leading. And he goes, well, you got to delegate. She goes, I am delegating. I need you to shut the fuck up. <laughs> it was great. And he got all mad. He got mad. And then what time for them to present it to Donald Trump? He half-assed it. He didn't sing along. He was a big fucking baby. How can you be 50 years old to be that big of a fucking baby? It just was unreal. You got to pout? Who the fuck pouts at 50? I didn't get my way. What, what did they take your fucking pail and shovel? Gives a fuck. Let somebody else write the song, and if it sucks, they're going to get fired. Put your heart and soul into it, and he didn't. And you know what? He got himself fucking booted right back to Beverly Hills. That poor bastard. You know what? If he was 10 years younger, he would have got the good hair plugs. You know? He would have. He got those late 90 ones. Oh, I'll tell you, it was a little rough one, you know? Um... What am I doing here? Uh, I met a girl six months ago. All right. Here we go. Lead, follow, get out of the way. Right? All right. Now, a few weeks ago, she said that she doesn't even flirt, which seems seemed very odd. Yeah, yeah. She's already like, she's, all right, let me just recap this. She's a real lady, and she prides herself on being honest and loyal. A few weeks ago, she said she doesn't even flirt which seemed very odd. A few days later, I heard her giggling and being very flirty with this guy she studies with. I confronted her about this, and she said, this is how she always talks to him, and I'm overreacting. I let it go, since I always sometimes flirt with other girls when she's not around. This week, she's going on vacation with her colleagues. This guy is also going. Oh, the same guy. Oh, Jesus. I brought up the vacation subject and mentioned that in trips uh, that I have been, as a single guy, there was a lot of sex and partying. Uh, she says that they don't do that and tries to change the subject. Let me guess, is she going to hedonism down on the island there, wherever the fuck that goes down? Uh, she says, I don't think that she is cheating, but I feel that she is hiding something. She also doesn't seem very attracted to me lately, even though she says so. What's your take on this one? What do you think about flirting? Uh, thanks and go fuck yourself. Um, I think you're with a lying sack of shit. 
who's a sociopath and they're saying all the right fucking things. Um, and it's also somebody that is, hasn't found who they want to be with and they're afraid to be alone. So they just get with people. And when the initial attraction wears off, they rather than break up, they just keep fucking lying. And I never knowingly intentionally lied. I think you have to listen to your gut here. I think she's, I think this is the tip of the iceberg. This is only six months in. She's going on a fucking vacation with other colleagues. Dude, six months in, if this chick was into you, she'd want to go on vacation with you. She wants to go on vacation with this fucking creep she caught her flirting with after she said she doesn't flirt. When you didn't even give her shit about flirting, she went out of her way to say she doesn't flirt. Give me a fucking break. Hey, I'm a really honest and loyal person. Oh, by the way, I don't do heroin. Why, why, why did you just bring that up? Oh, you know, I'm just, just putting it out there. I don't believe in it. So, you know, all the spoons are bent. Um, that's just my gut. The way you presented it, too, by the way. You might have left some stuff out, but the way you presented it, I think she's, I think she's a fucking liar. Um, all right, P.S., thank you for sharing your honest insight, you funny bastard. I love the advice on life and women. I also don't trust banks. Oh, that's nice. All right, well, I don't trust your girlfriend. How about that? What do you say? What do you say there, huh? What do you say there? Um... You know what's funny about that? And if she actually did cheat and you confronted her about it on one of these fucking TV shows that they would actually still, they would still somehow blame the guy. You know what I mean? I love that shit. Like how they actually, there's, there's an article somewhere on the internet. I saw it, you know, those things that they try to just get you to, to click on it. And it always works for me. You know, the top 10 bad celebrity nose jobs, the top 10 fucking gangster movies of all time, blah, 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 blah. They had the top 10 reasons women cheat, right? So I looked it up. And eight of the reasons were the guy's fault. It's the funniest fucking shit ever. Oh, another movie I saw a little bit of. Remember that movie Monster with Charlize Theron? Um, (coughs) That that movie is one of the most sexist fucking movies of all fucking time, but it'll never be called on it because it's it's going in the other direction. The fact that that is a movie about a serial killer is it's like when you look at movies about serial killers, like the Jeffrey Dahmer one, the Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer, they are they are fucking they are monsters, right? This fucking movie, despite the fact it was called Monster. It was a goddamn love story, and they justified so much of her killing to the point when she finally gets busted. It's this big emotional moment of when her her lover is is going to betray her and rat her out on the stands, and is her you know Charlize's character is sitting there crying. She's saying with her eyes like, "It's okay, baby, I understand." Do you know how fucking infuriated I would be if? I was a, re- a relative, one of the actual victims of that absolute fucking lunatic serial killer. They almost made her a fucking hero. I mean, I was waiting for this Sally Field moment where she just stands up and holds uh, Union now, was, you know, for other fucking female serial killers. It was ridiculous. I don't know. I don't. I don't have any. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm getting very extra jaded as I get older and I I, I'm giving a fuck less about people's complaints because I'm finding they never complain for other people they're always bitching for themselves right like take the Oscars women got up there right and they complained that they don't get paid enough and blah 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 now why are they complaining are they complaining because it's unfair or are they complaining because it's unfair and it's happening to them? You know what I mean? Which is the reason why guys aren't complaining about it, because they don't give a fuck about it, because it's not happening to them. But that doesn't make women better people, because women don't give a fuck about the shit that's happening to guys. Have you ever seen a woman out there that gives a fuck that there's yet another fucking man standing in a bay window, looking out, seeing a FedEx or a UPS truck pulling up as he's just sitting there having a mini heart attack, thinking in his head, Jesus Christ, what the fuck did she buy now? 
She's spending all my fucking money. What the fuck could she have possibly bought now? She's spending it faster than I can make it. You know, what about that financial dynamic? Do they ever bring that up? Have you ever seen a woman stick up for a guy in that fucking situation? Why would they? They don't have time. They have their own fucking problems. So that's how I view it. Oh, is that what's happening to you? Oh, that sucks for you. Um, <laughs> I don't really feel that, but it's just it's just fun to annoy people sometimes. Um, all right, let's plow ahead here. Uh, son is a fuck boy. Okay, I'm not sure I know what that means. Hey, Billy Loose Lips. <laughs> I'm writing to you for a little insight. I am a mother of the age 42 and my son at the age of 18. He's an only child, and, and although his father wasn't around, I think I did a decent job with him. Uh, but you call him a fuckboy. I made sure he got to school, and if he threw up, I took him to the doctors. I don't know if it's his new friends or just genetics from his father, but ever since he's been in college, he's been breaking hearts left and right. Me and his stepfather, parentheses, he knows it isn't his real father, Try to raise him to be a man and take responsibility for his actions. I'm hoping it's just a phase and he's not becoming his biological father. He has a new girlfriend every week, and the longest he's held a relationship was a month and a half. That's not really breaking hearts. I mean, maybe a month and a half a woman can get feelings enough to love you, but, I mean, if you're with a woman for a week, I mean, give me a break. He's, he's banging. I never attended college, so I don't know if this is just college kids or what. Whenever I try to talk to him, it turns into an argument slash fight. Uh, and when his stepfather tries to step in, the situation gets worse. I'm afraid that I released a heartless fuck machine into the world. I don't care if he gets married or not. If all he wants to do is fuck, so be it. I just wish he wouldn't break those poor girls' hearts in the process. Any insight would be appreciated. Well, yeah, I think you're kind of projecting. How do you know he breaks these women's hearts? If he's only with them for a week... You know, I mean, how, how hurt can you get month and a half? Yeah, that's fucked up, I guess. Um, but you're also ignoring the fact that he's a product of your upbringing. Which you basically said you did a decent job. You made sure he went to school. And if he threw up, you took him to the doctors. I mean, that sounds like I mean, those are your words. That's kind of sounds like you did the bare minimal here. Um. From the friends I have whose dads or moms didn't stick around, you know, at the age he's at, they, they have to process that. So he's going through the process of that. And um, I don't know. I've always had this thing. When you're in your 20s, you're kind of you're out there taking your childhood out on people because you don't know who you are yet. And if you had a good childhood and you were raised right, then you're probably doing good things. But if you had a bad childhood, you're out there hurting people, not even realizing it. You know, it just seems like normal behavior. You're doing what was done to you or whatever. I don't know. There's too many um, variables here. I would say, uh, I don't know. It's weird that when you try to talk to him about it, he starts flipping out. I don't, I don't know what's going on here. But, you know, if he with somebody for like a week, if he's fucking telling him that he really likes him, he sees that there's going to be a relationship here, then... Um, then yeah, he shouldn't be doing that. But I have to be honest with you, a lot of a lot of people don't have that skill set, male or female, at the college age. Um, and people listening, you would be surprised, specifically guys, you'd be surprised what honesty does with a woman if you just tell her up front what the fuck it is you're doing. What are we doing? Well, I'm between relationships right now. I'm not looking to get in one. So what are we? We're just having fun? Yeah. So you you don't like me? Well, I like you. I just don't like you like that. Why not? I I I, I don't know. It's just one of you can't you just answer them honestly. And you'd be surprised the amount of times that they'll hang out and sort of you know still hook up with you. It's weird, but you always have to watch out with women because then you don't know if you got one like oh I'm I'm I'll. 
you know, once he hits this, he'll be fucking, you know, loving me or whatever. It could be, <laughs> could be something like that. Or I uh, just was just thinking of Nia just rolling her eyes at me that I just said that. But um, all right. All right, date story from a lady. I recently went to a farmer's market where I met a woman who wanted to set me up with her single, never married, uh, 40-year-old son. Oh, okay. Well, is he crushing it in the business world? Because, I mean, maybe he just didn't have time for that part of his life. Other than that, I'm already seeing a red flag. Anyways, she said, I had just been dumped a couple of weeks before, so I figured, why not? I gave her my I gave her my number and ended up uh, going on a dinner with him. After the male waiter took our order, he turned to me and said, doesn't our waiter have a great smile? The waiter was male, and he never compl- uh, complimented my appearance at all. Okay. Well, I mean, he could just be a guy that just, you know, likes people. Okay. Now, right now, you're acting like so far with this far into the story. But you know how it ends up. I feel like you're leading me down the road that this guy is gay. um, And he doesn't know it or he's in the closet or he's fighting it or whatever. But as of right now, he just made an innocent comment about the waiter. And he hasn't talked about you. And I just talked about Peter Pan. And that's fresh in my head. So right now I'm picturing you dressed all in an all green dress. Um, All right. When we finished our dinner, he offered to give me a ride home. We got to the parking lot and there was his white nine passenger van. Oh, my God. Okay, I need to reevaluate my life choices because I hopped right in that car. Oh, my God. He walked me to my door and I gave him an awkward side hug and ran into my apartment. Good for you. Uh, The next day he texted me. Thank you for joining me for yum yums and a cocktail last night. It's safe to say I went on a date with a gay man, right? <laughs> no, no, it, it, it's safe to say that you know why this guy is 40 years old um, and single. Okay. Joining me for some yum yums and a cocktail last night is just, I mean, that's just, just something you read it. You have to walk it off. That's like you read it. You just go, ah, and then you have to walk it off. Um, yeah, and he's got a nine passenger van. Uh, you, listen, um, this guy might be a little odd, but I, I think it's, I think you just, I think it's safe to say that you didn't vibe with this guy. Um, he might just be one of those those straight guys that just exists in that weird fucking area. Like for any pilots listening, right? He's got the teardrop entry into fucking uh, heterosexuality. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got your John Wayne types. All right, you got your betas, and then you got those those the straddlers, you know, which is fucking hilarious, especially right now where everybody's supposed to be woke and progressive and all that. But then when you meet somebody who's comfortable enough to say that another man has a nice smile and describe food as yum yums, that they're immediately like, you know, women are repulsed by that. Um I just think that, okay, this guy could still be straight, but he's just, he's one of those guys that, you know, if an intruder comes through the door, he's probably going to be yelling louder than you. Screaming, I should say. You know, not saying that gay guys can't fight. I would never suggest that, all right? You know, I would never suggest that, especially after all the bear videos I've been watching. (laughs) 
And, you know, the nickname for like a manly gay guy is a bear. So like, no, if, uh, if a fucking, let me tell you something. If, if, a, if, a, if a gay guy who's described as a bear fights anywhere, like a real bear, I wouldn't want to go at, I wouldn't want to be anywhere near one of those guys when they get pissed off. So, um, I think it's safe to say that you dated somebody that made you really fucking uncomfortable and, um, that your nether regions were drier than the fucking Ser- Serengeti during the, uh, yeah, you're not going to bang this guy. All right. You're not going to bang this guy. You're not going to be with this guy. It's fucking over. I mean, the nine passenger van, is he driving around in a company car? Thank you for joining me for yum yums and a cocktail last night. I'm, oh my God. Uh, I, I don't even know. Like, I'm actually going to say that like, I'm going to say that next time I go out and get a fucking steak dinner with a buddy of mine, I'm going to say that, hey, thank you for joining me for some yum yums at a cocktail. I can't, I can't even do that. I get, ah, I get all fucking, I don't know. All right. Let's yeah, Let's walk that one off. Let's walk that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right. Have you noticed that though? There's something like a gay guy that's like out of the closet. It's like totally relaxed. That somebody that's in the closet is one of the most uncomfortable things ever. So if that guy's in, I, I, I understand, like, maybe that was, like, the fucking tone. Um, you're just like, oh, my God, just go blow somebody. Get it over with so we can have everybody can just fucking relax. You're out of the closet. You just don't know it. Just fucking be gay so we can all relax. <laughs> all right. Next one. What the fuck to do? Sir Burr. Love the show and listen weekly. Thanks for making my money as entertaining. Well, you're welcome. All right. I am 39 and separated with a child. And I started seeing a woman who was 43, divorced with her own child. But up, but up, up. Here's the story. Um, about two months into the relationship, we were getting serious and we started discussing a future together. However, our relationship started to erode about as quickly as it started. And we ended up breaking up after dating a total of six months. One of the reasons we ended things was that we didn't agree on wanting more kids. She wanted more, but I didn't. We ended on such a bad note that we agreed to not talk anymore. Um, Okay, at this point, I'm like, good. That was a very mature relationship. Early on, you said what you both wanted. You realized that you didn't. You wanted two different things, and you walked. Got a little ugly there for a second, but who gives a fuck? Anyways, he goes, as luck would have it, About two to three weeks after we broke up, she called me to tell me she is pregnant. Oh, my God. Wait a minute. She wanted more and I didn't. She pulled the goalie. Oh, dude, you didn't want more kids. You didn't use a condom. Oh, my God. She goes, he goes, I did not know how it was possible. Okay, because we took precautions, but I guess I slipped up. I slipped one past the goalie. I was devastated and worried because not only do I not want more kids, my current financial situation would limit me greatly in my ability to take care of my child and another child. My question to you is, what the fuck do I do? Uh, I would get a paternity test. Definitely get a paternity test to make sure it's yours. Um, If you don't want to, I mean, that's, and that's a prayer. I'm not saying anything bad about this woman, but just, you know, you got to throw the Hail Mary here and hope maybe you get lucky. He goes, my question to you is, what the fuck do I do? She doesn't want to have an abortion and told me that we should get back together and have the baby. Is she lying? She said, if not, she would try to legally prevent me from having a part, being part of the child's life. As I was writing this, she was about six weeks pregnant, so a lot of time, a lot of time to stress about it. Um, yeah, dude, f- fuck all of that. She's going to, I mean, wait a minute. Let me just read the last paragraph of this. He goes, I'm not stupid enough to go to a comedian for advice. However, I do think you have an interesting perspective on life, and I'd love to hear your point of view. This situation has since been resolved. See below to see how it turned out, but the but answer the question before you see the result. Thanks and go fuck yourself. Well, I don't see the result here. Below, I'd love to know what happened. Jesus, now you're leaving me hanging and now all my listeners. 
All right, here's my thing. If any woman said, you know, you got me pregnant and I didn't want to be with her, and she said, uh, if, you, if you don't live with me and we have a relationship, you'll never see uh, the kid, I, I would just be like, that's no way to go into a relationship. Okay? You want to find love. Okay? And the way to find true love is not to hold somebody hostage. Okay? We made a mistake. Now we're going to be adults and we are going to raise this child in an unconventional way because we do not love each other. So it's not going to be fair to the kid if we're both together. It also will not be fair to the kid if you prevent the kid from seeing the mother, his mother or his father. Okay? So we need to be adults and put this kid first and set aside our differences and be as mature about this as we possibly can. The next 18 years are critical in this kid's life, and we need to suck it up. All right? So let's get on the same damn page here. All right? I mean, somewhere along the lines, I, I would say that. But I would definitely get a fucking paternity test because um, you never know what somebody's doing. And, uh, you know, you kind of seem like dumbfounded that you actually got her pregnant. Who knows what happens? She seems like she wants more kids. She could be this desperate person that was, you know, I don't know what. But uh, stranger things have happened. So I would definitely get a paternity test. And if she gets mad, fuck her. Who gives a shit? If she gets mad, and be like, listen, you know, you shouldn't say this. But in your head, you got to be thinking, this is somebody who's fucking crazy enough to basically threaten me into her life. If you're crazy enough to do that, you're crazy enough to say a kid that isn't mine is mine. Okay? She's not acting stable right now. So, I don't know. And that is healthy paranoia. That is not, uh, you know. All right. My wife rated me a 4 out of 10. Wow. Okay. I'll tell you what. I give her a 9 for honesty. Um, Dear Billy the Baker Bitch. I am a 26-year-old grad student and been married for nearly four years already. You guys got married young, huh? My wife is around the same age as me, and we met in Colombia, where I was working over the summer. She's one of those thick, tall, and tan Latina girls that drive any man crazy, and believe me, I fell for it. Life was good for a while, but recently we definitely hit a rough patch. Uh, so this past weekend, I came home from a trip to, to Texas, and for whatever reason, I needed to use her phone. When I opened it, what do you know? It opens to a list of dudes... With my name included, I started looking and I'm seeing 10, 10, 8.5, 0, etc. And then, boom, I see my name with a pathetic 4. Wow. The kicker, when I confronted her about this, she's like, it's not a big deal. It's just a list of me and my friends we're talking about last night about our previous sex partners. Wow. Like, that's going to make it better. So there I am married to a woman who thinks I'm a 4 in bed. Not sure where to go from here with the relationship. Yeah, I do. Don't have a kid with her until you figure out what the fuck all that means. Uh, To point out, I'm no fucking bum. I'm in great physical shape. I've never had a problem with the ladies. I've got a good job. I'm one of those non-hero army guys, and I've always been good to her. I'm not opposed to ending it, but I don't want to be a baby about some juvenile list. What do you think? Thanks and go fuck yourself. Uh, I think you love her too much to see the forest through the trees, dude. That's, I mean, what what are we doing here? Um, for her to say that's no big deal, I think that's the tip of the iceberg, uh, unfortunately. I'd ask her to explain it a little better than it's no big deal. But um, on the outside looking in, uh, that's not going to end well. All right? That's just my opinion. I am not a professional therapist, but that is not going to fucking end well. And, uh Yeah. I would leave it at that. And also, fuck that number. You know, don't let it, you know. This is the deal. She probably thinks you're more of a six or a seven. It's just what wives do. It's their job to always knock you down a few numbers so you don't feel too good about yourself. (laughs) So you won't go out and attract another woman. They don't want you walking out the door feeling... I used to do a bit about that. They want you walking out the door... Confident enough that you still go out to make the donuts, but not confident enough that you're actually attracting, you know, women to you. So they got to mind fuck you a little bit. Wow. You know, it'd be funny if you do break up with her. You should go, 
Well, I think you should go with this guy here, you know, maybe an 8-5. Can't go with the guy that's like a 10, though, because, you know, if he's a 10, I mean, that guy's obviously going to be fucking banging somebody else. Go with the 8-5, you know? What are you crying for? You're, you're upgrading by four and a half. You want to be riding back here and coach with my dick? Go up there to business class. And also the fact that you said to your, uh, what'd you say? Uh, I'm not opposed to ending it. So I think you kind of know that you need to end it. You know, you're not like, I love her to death. What can I do to, to keep her? You're like, I'm not opposed to ending it. So I would fucking end it. Um, you had a good time, you know? You had a tall, gorgeous Colombian woman for a wife for four years. And, uh, you know, that's, that's a great fucking story. <laughs> Onward and upward, sir. Uh, And thank you for your safe service.